Hi, welcome to my YouTube video on the installation of the crankshaft sensor for a Land Rover Discovery 2. That's this little fellow right here. And this is my 2001 Land Rover Discovery 2, which I was having the problems on. Now before I get into the installation, I'm just going to talk quickly about some of the symptoms that led up to what I believed was the problem. I was having trouble starting my car. It would crank, but it wouldn't turn over. But if I gave a little bit of a gas in the beginning, it would start. At first I thought this was the air idle control valve, which I cleaned out and made the problem go away for about a week. Then it happened again. It, same thing. I was parked somewhere, I tried to start my car, it cranked, but it wouldn't turn over. But I waited 20 minutes of wondering what to do, and it started up again. I was able to drive it. I attribute this to some maybe bad gas that I got, and if anyone that owns one of these cars they know how finicky they are when it comes to getting proper gas. So I ran a conditioner through it and there again I got about a week out of it and everything was going great until the Friday before a four day long weekend where I was quite far away from my house, car wouldn't start, and I finally got it started but then I wouldn't want to die in low idle. I was driving it, 1000 RPMs and lower, you could feel it wanting to die. And if it got below 750 the car would just stop. Try to start it again. Sometimes it would start up, sometimes it wouldn't. But so, what I had to do is when I came to a stop or I came into heavy traffic, I'd have to throw it in neutral and keep the gas going. Finally made it home, and of course, Friday of a long weekend, no mechanic was able to, to look at it, so I had to self diagnose. I went on the internet, I went to Land Rover forums, um, and a lot of the people had the same symptoms, and that's what it was. It was this guy right here. So, now I'm going to talk about the installation of it. All you really need are these two guys right here. A 7mm and an 8mm wrench. And that's it. The rest is kind of just hard work. Now, what I always do when I'm doing electrical is I unhook the battery. So the battery was unhooked and I have to get under the car and I'll show you exactly where the position is and how to position your body. Because it took me about two and a half hours to, to, from start to finish to get this thing done but an hour of it was literally me under the car trying to figure out how to position my body in the way to contort it to be able to get to where this part is. So I am going to the car now and I'm just going to quickly show you where it is and what I did to get it going. So of course you'll need a light because it is quite dark down here. But basically, if you're under the car and you look up to where your tailpipe meets your manifold, just to the left of it, that's where the heat shield is. Now you're going to have to be really good with your left hand. So if you're laying this way, the length way of your car, you will be able to get your left hand up there and unhook the screws. Um, the only other issue is from down here is where the multi-plug is in the harness. Now the multi-plug is a little higher up and a little harder to get to. What you're going to have to do is just push it out and you push it to, towards the back of the car and that'll release it from the harness and then you'll be able to do everything else from the top of the car as far as the multi-plug goes. But if you're under here and you, can, and you can actually get your hand up in there, you'll be able to use your left hand to unhook it. So the 7 millimeter is for the heat shield and the 8 millimeter are for the screws that attach the, mold, attach the sensor. Now I'm going to come back out of the car so I can show you the rest. Okay, so when you're, when you're installing this, or when you're uninstalling it first, there's going to be two spacers on these things here. Well, now, what I did was when I unhooked it, I would set the spacers and the, and the nuts aside in the direction that it goes back together. Because that's very important. The spacers have to be in the exact same spot. Now, once this is unhooked, you will be able to reach down with your hand and unclip it, it's going to be right down there below the manifold and you'll see it dangling once it's unhooked from the, um, 
from the car. Now, once it's unhooked and you get it off, you can get, now you go to reinstall it. So you put it back in, you put the spacers and the screws back in, but make sure that when you push this thing in, you push it in all the way. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you're doing, because you can actually feel it push in and grip. Then, spacers, screws, tighten, but don't tighten too hard, just hand tighten, because you don't want to overdo it. Then the heat shield goes back on, screws, tighten. Now, you will be able to hook this all back up from the top of the car. Um, if you have some really small hands, it'd be really helpful because it is down far and to actually get the multi-club clipped back on is going to be a pain in the butt, but, it'll, but you'll end up doing it no problem. So once that's done, it's all clipped up back together, start your car, it should start up. Well, of course you have to hook the battery back up first, but start the car and away you go. Now, I did mine about two weeks ago and there's been no problems. So I hope this kind of helps everybody. Body position, working this from the top of the car, Left hand, get really good with it because you're going to need to once you're under there. Thanks very much for watching.